Hi, my name is Gwen and today we are going to do my first video of Houseplant Tour 2022. I hope you all enjoy the video, so let's get started. Okay, so um, we will start in my kitchen. This is my Boston fern. Um, it is half dying. It's because I left it um, for two weeks during the heat wave and uh, when I came back it was already half dead. As you can see this is all the new growth. Um, so this, I actually keep the water in this pot. Um, this is another Boston fund of mine. Uh, this one was a new one and I left it right after I bought it. Um, as you can see it is bouncing back. But it will take quite a while to, for it to look at least something like this. Um, I actually was about to throw this away, but um, I saw a video and they say to trim it. Um, so I gave it a chance and it worked. And here is my um, ivy. Um, you can see I love this so much. I have this for almost a year now and is basically directly opposite of south facing window uh, not too close to the window where the leaf will burn but is received enough sun to thrive um, so when I first bought it it was just it was here and it grew this much um, I have my lipstick plant uh, right here. It grew a lot as well. I first bought it um, a couple months ago and it, it was just it was just till here. Um, it actually um, loved the spot and actually bloomed for me. Um, there were a lot more flowers but some of them dropped. Um, and here is my little Halloween decorations. I know it's still early, but um, they were very cute in TK Maxx and I couldn't pass on it. Um, so I I believe it, this is kind of some kind of nut plant. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, if anyone knows, please leave the comment. Um, it, have, it has um, these little nut at the base. One of the very uncommon house plant I bought um, from Ikea is a coconut tree um, it looked so pretty and I couldn't pass on it. Um, it, it it was gorgeous so when I first bought it is it had this leaf um, this one and I believe that one over there and um, I bought it four months ago and it pushed out this leaf after a month of being with me and this one is coming out right now. The only downside of a coconut tree as a houseplant is um, it need a lot of um, sun and um, I place it right on my kitchen table next to the south facing window but still um, it doesn't grow as fast as you I would like it to um, but yeah I have a crested gecko and he loved to play on my coconut tree so I think it was a good purchase <laughs> and we run over here is my sing syngonium sing syngonium um, I loved it so much look how big the leaves are um, those big leaves are actually uh, new. Um, when I first I first bought it, um, the leaves were this small, I believe, and it was this tiny. Um, yeah, so once in a while, I after I water it, I need to rotate it because you can see it's kind of like growing towards the sun. And next to it is my money trees. There aren't a lot of growth because um, it was facing toward the wall on the other side 
um, so it didn't receive a lot of sunlight so once in a while I have to rotate it as well so if we move to um, my kitchen window this is my snake plant um, it doesn't grow very fast um, and um, and I leave it right next to the south facing window it does require a lot of sun some people leave snakes plant in a darker area and they are fine but um, for them to grow I think you need to put them in direct sunlight so this is my succulent um, I'm very bad at naming them so I have no idea what this is called um, but the two they support each other, or at least the my snake plant um, supports this succulents right here. So um, I will put the pictures of how it looks when I first bought it, but it grew so much for me. So you can see these are all part of the old one, or the original plant. Um, it looked very sad for a while, and when summer came. Um, it branch out and it and it also push out some um, use one at the base as well it looked very cute and here is um, another succulent plant I don't know the, the name of it but um, I loved it because it very chubby um, so if I can show you how it looked uh, it's very chubby um, so what you can see these are the are the old leaves, the original leaves. Um, I almost killed this as well. I I think it didn't receive enough sun. Um, so and I moved it here and it tried for me, so <laughs> I'm going to leave it here permanently. Um, it's also push out the little chippy one at the base for me as well. Um, this is my furry cactus. Uh, I had this one for about two years now, and it, it doesn't do much. I mean, it is a cactus, so uh, I just love the look of it. <laughs> uh, this one is my uh, raindrop peperomia, and it pushed out some flowers for me this summer. Um, I actually don't know what I'm supposed to do with them but I would just let them drop by their own <laughs> um, and here I and this one is very easy to propagate as well I did a propagation from the peperomia and it grew like crazy um, and this is one of the succulents that I killed um, I accidentally overwatered it and I left it in um, the shadow and <laughs> it died from root rot so don't do that um, but I did um, I kept some of the leaf and I did some propagation and you, as you can see some of the ooh, some of the some of them actually push out new babies um, so hopefully um, I will have some of these baby succulents um, and next to it is my aloe vera um, I have a love and hate relationship with aloe vera they always die on me I mean uh, my aloe vera actually look very nice now but um, half of the time it's look like it's half dying <laughs> so yeah so um next to the window is my ficus audrey um i don't know if i say it correctly but um this is a new addition to my home and i loved her so much um, it pushed out new growth for me and you can see a new bud coming um so <laughs> this chair is broken um, and we don't have any storage so I just use it as a plant scent because um, I cannot put it anywhere and um, want more space for my plant at least um, so as you can see I have no 
space next to the window so um that's why i put her here um and also i don't want her to be so close to the other plants in case um she has any bugs on her um so as you can see this is my kitchen there's my ivy and this is my living room um, and this is my dracaena which we receive a lot of sun from the south facing window and um, <laughs> I really need to water this because you can tell if a Dracaena needs some water when they leave kind of um, drop like this. Um, and when they receive enough water, the leaf were perked up. But now I, I think I need to water it. <laughs> um, I actually got this a year ago. Um, it was it was chill here, and it grew a lot for me. As you can see, it's still pushing out new growth, even though um, it's almost the end of summer. You don't get a lot of sun in Scotland all year round. Uh, um, yeah, so this is my dracaena. Um, at the bottom is is my croton. Croton? Um, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, <laughs> I got this from a local plant shop um, and it, this is my fiance's favorite. Um, I actually didn't know anything about Croton. Um, I bought it right there in, in the shop because he said he liked it and um, I just want him to be involved with my plant collection, so I said, why not? I would try to keep it alive. <laughs> um, it it was actually very small. I actually changed the pot to the bigger one. Um, it received a lot of sunlight, but it needs more for the variegations, or at least the color. I don't think it's the var variegation. It's just the color to push through, because I'm, I... I read it somewhere that when they receive enough sunlight to their level, um, the leaf will um, turn red like this or this. But otherwise, um, it will push out new green leaf instead. It doesn't change its color. So opposite of my Dracaena is my Chinese Evergreen. Um, I love this so much. Um, the leaf is so beautiful and um, this one kept pushing out new growth for me. Um, so as you can see, this window is still a south facing window, but the sunlight goes straight into the room instead of goes sideways. So I would say this is a bright spot, but it's not um it doesn't receive a lot of sun um it's only receive like an hour or two per day uh, like this as you can see but it never received more than that um so originally this one was on top of the counter where the chinese evergreen is um so this belonged to my fiance he chose it. Um, his Chinese evergreen was at the bottom and it grew slower um, than mine. Um, so he complained about it and I switched it for him because um, he said mine received more sunlight on top of the counter than his at the bottom right here. Um, so I switched it about um, three months ago. Um, this one is a slow grower actually. I actually don't know what I did wrong with it. I did repot it um, both of them at the same time um, with the same soy. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with this but I love them both. So um, next to the Chinese Evergreen is another Dracaena I believe but this one lives um, this one lives in water and um, 
it's just tap water. I didn't put any fertilizer in here or anything else. Uh, but it grew so much for me as well. It also doesn't receive a lot of sunlight, uh, but somehow it has thrived there. Um, so this is how this this section looked. Um, the bottom is my Chinese evergreen on top, and I have a little decorations around it. Um, I'm in the middle of watering my plants, so these bottles are everywhere. This is my fertilizer. Um, so for every single plant, I have this um, little note. There you can see some plants are not vocal um, about when they need water at all, so this is very helpful. Uh, so this is my living room window. Um, it is also a self-facing window. This is a cilantro. Um, I will put a pictures of how it normally look like in the shop. Um, I have this for four years now. Um, this one has been through a lot. And at the beginning, is almost died because I forgot to water it for so long. Um, and then I overwater it and it's got some root rot. Um, but then my fiance saved it and um, it grew so much but I trimmed so many of it. I trimmed so much off as well because um, it started to get drips, a very bad infection. So I trimmed a lot of it off already, but it still looked like a bush. Next to this it are my cacti. So um, next to it is my ficus elastica. Um, I almost killed it, um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but um, it's not growing for me. Um, it's, as you can see, it's still alive, but it doesn't uh, thrive. So next to it is um, some kind of succulent. Um, I'm very bad at their names, so... Um, I will try and find a name and put it on screen. Um, so this one had drips um, while I was away. Um, I came back and I was trying to uh, get rid of the bugs, but um, as you can see, is um, there's still some damage um, around the plant. Uh, so I sprinkled some of uh, these this powder i forgot the name as well so i'm gonna put it on the screen um so the powder is supposed to kill the bugs where they are crawling around um so hopefully this will live um it used to be a big bush um but as you can see it, it is no longer a bush <laughs> uh it's barely hanging in there so i hope um i'll keep you update so next to the window is my uh, fiddle leaf fake. Uh, it's actually one of my first big plant. I bought this from Ikea. Um, it was a very good bargain. Um, it was only £20 and it was this big. Um, I left it there since day one and it looks like it loves a spot so um, I read it somewhere that the moment you put a fiddle leaf fig in its favorite spot and it's doing well you're not supposed to move it otherwise um, you will stress the plant and they it will start to drop leaf um, so yeah, I haven't moved it since day one. So uh, you can see those are my hanging plants by the windows. Um, so I have two spider plants on top and my string of hearts. They love full sun, direct sunlight. The only problems is that I have to water them more often because they are all in a smaller pot. I think um, that is the only downsize. Um, I tried um, other places in the house, but um, they didn't thrive, so um, I will leave them there. 
So let's move on to over here. Um, you will think this section right here next to the window will receive a lot of sun, but um, it doesn't. <laughs> um, that's why I have a little light right here for uh, some of the plant. I know I need um, some grow light, but for now, um, it works. <laughs> it works last winter, so hopefully it will work this winter as well. So on top, I have my pothos. Um, this is a marble green pothos. Um, if you, I don't, I don't know if you can see it. Um, it doesn't receive enough sunlight um, up there, so um, you can barely see that it is a marble green pothos. Um, the rest, they actually turn green because they. <laughs> the leaf actually turned green because the plant doesn't receive enough sunlight. Um, I need to move the plant, but I have no other place. So until then, it will stay up there. So next to it is my orchid. Um, I cut the stem off um, and hopefully it will push out new stem and some flowers um, soon. <laughs> Um, otherwise, it looks very healthy. You're supposed to keep orchids in a clear pot because they receive um, the food through the root, the sun through the root. Um, next to it is my Enjoy Pothos, I think. I hope I get the name correctly. Um, it's, it also doesn't receive enough sunlight up there. Um, I removed it, um, but for now, I don't have any other place for it. This is my ficus benjamina. Um, at the beginning, I didn't know how to take care of it. Um, I read on the internet that you need to keep the soy moist, so I kept the soy wet. Um, it started to, um, the leaves started to turn yellow and they started to drop all at once. Um, then I realized um, you need to keep the soil a little bit dry between the water, between watering, and um, yeah, look at this. Um, <laughs> it looks very healthy now, but um, I wish someone had told me that at the beginning. Um, yeah, I learned from my mistake, obviously. <laughs> but um, next to it is my bingonia. Um, I actually have zero experience in Bingonia. I bought this because it looks so beautiful. But um, I I don't think my house is um, humid enough um, because you can see um, it has crispy edges. And um, yeah, my house it doesn't have the conditions of a greenhouse so once in a while I will get leaf like this from this bingonia but um, but it still push out new growth for me um, so I guess I'm doing something right <laughs> um, this is my um, other bingonia I only have two um, this was my first bingonia I um, I didn't have any experience with Bingonia, but I saw this and I couldn't go home without it. Um, at first it would die on me and I realized I need to keep this um, closer to the window. Um, and it actually happy here because it pushed out um, some flowers for me. Next to it is are my um, cacti. Um, these are my new additions. Um, I couldn't <laughs> go home without them. Um, I went to IKEA and I saw that they have new cacti in store. And as <laughs> you can see, I love this one so much because it has like little, like those little fur around the plant. Um, I'm in love with this. Um, and this one looked like a bunny. 
um that's why <laughs> um this is um another type of aloe vera i have this for two and a half years now and um i think i have the pictures when it was small uh, i was trying to find it and put it on screen for you to compare it and here is um, another propagation of my raindrop peperomia um, this uh, was a leaf from the mother plant um, and look at these babies so on the other side is my monstera uh, I have this for almost a year now and when I first got it it was um, half the size um, or even smaller actually um, I repotted it in a bigger one um, right after I got it so as you can see um, this is my hand and this is the leaf size um, this monstera is very heavy to move around so underneath my monstera is my tiny doll I believe um, it was much bigger but I left it during the heat wave for two weeks um, half more than half of it um, were dead when I came home um, this is what was left um, and actually it actually pushed out a lot of new growth and then it, it is actually a very easy plant to take care of but you don't see this very often in the market um, at all um, next to this is um, I don't know the name of this but I will put the name on screen um, I believe I bought this because I wanted a a bird of paradise but <laughs> it was too expensive in um, my local plant shop and in Ikea um, I think it was 50 pounds in Ikea and I didn't want to spend that much um, on bird of paradise um, and it's, it was even more expensive in local plant shop so I settled for this mini version of it um, I loved it but it actually doesn't do much it it pushed out so many new growth um, but I still going to get a bird of paradise when I have enough money <laughs> so behind here is my mini monstera and right next to it is my monstera adansonii I'm trying to make them both climb up this wall um, so hopefully um, this is my first alocasia. The reason why I tie it to the table leg is because um, it doesn't stand on its own. Um, it actually tilted toward this side um, and I don't have any poles to support it and um, it actually in a small part for now. So when I repot this I will tie it into a moss pole or just a plank. Um, but for now, um, this is the way it's going to stay. So next to my alocasia is my prayer plant table. Um, we have an extra table in the living room that we wasn't using. So um, I thought I can just use it as a plant stand. So my first prayer plant is a tenanthi at the back. So I have my tenanthi for almost two years now. Um, it is. It was actually bigger than this. Um, I separated half of the plant to put in my crested gecko tank. It actually very easy to take care of that plant, um, and I would highly recommend it um, as the first um, prayer plant. Um, it it actually require a little bit of dry dryness between watering. Um, it doesn't need as much humidity as the rest of a prayer plant, especially Calathea. So this is my first Calathea jungle velvet. Um, it actually has some um, fungal issue, as you can see here, um, on all these leaves. Um, it was uh, at the beginning of my plant journey as well so um, I didn't know what I was supposed to do it looked very sad uh, the leaf 
didn't fold up um, during the night and um, they didn't open up during the day as well. It, it was droopy and it stay droopy. And I did all the research. I I knew that I disturbed the root so bad, but I don't. I didn't know how to um, save it. So I was about to throw it away. Um, but then I was um, occupied with other things in uni, and I kind of left it by its own. Um, not not completely because um it was around the time i first started to write down the watering schedule on um, the little notepad and put it um on my plant so i was watering this every two weeks and um it was slowly bouncing back um and now the leaves ac actually fold up during the night and open up during the day obviously I still have some fungal issue um, and I don't think I will be able to get rid of it completely but I am um, start to um, push out new growth like new normal side leaf growth and not like these yeah so one of the tip um, I would say for Calathea is they actually need time to adapt to your new environment i wouldn't recommend to um, repot it right right away um just leave it so it can um adapt to the new environment and also it's um, actually like a little bit of dryness between watering i know people say um calathea or prayer plants in general um, they prefer the soil to be moist, but um, I actually found it the opposite way. It actually need a little bit dryness between watering. Um, just poke your finger down the soil. If it's like one or two centimeter dry um, at the top of the soil, um, then you can water it again. But um, I would recommend to stick with a regular schedule. That was actually how I saved my Calathea. Um, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, I have this one for almost a year now. So this is my Maranta. Um, I have this for half a year now. And this is my second time propagating the plant. Um, I actually broke this while watering. And I decided to chop it into three smaller pieces so I can make this part right here look a little bit fuller. Um, so next to this is my medallion. I'm not quite sure, but I will put the name on the screen. I bought this, I think, um, three months ago and I didn't disturb the root. Um, I didn't change the pot. I just left it so it can adapt to my new environment. Obviously not in the same area because um, you need to quarantine your new plant in case it has any bugs. Um, so it was left on its own in the corner for about um, a month. Just a regular checkup on the leaves so to make sure that um, there aren't any bugs. And then I decided to move it here um, two months ago and as you can see it look very healthy um, there I don't have any issue with this plant at all since day one um, so yeah so I learned a little tip and tricks along the way obviously for my mistakes um, but um, I'm getting better at this this is my second Calathea I bought this um, around last winter and the air was extremely dry so as you can see some of the leaves are actually very um, crispy <laughs> around the edges. I started to turn on my humidifier and um, it actually doing quite well now but um, if you don't like these um, crispy edges you can cut the leaf off but um, they don't really bother me, so I just leave them on. 
Yeah, so this is my Calathea table. I use a different pot and plant stand to make it look um, different level. So in the front is my nerve plant. Um, I love this pot so much. So this is my philodendron hope. This first came to me um, even bigger than this. Um, I actually had to cut I think at least five or six leaves off because it came to me with thrips. Those are the leaves that was um, infested so severely that I have to cut them off. Like there wasn't any chance that I could be able to save the leaf. So in order to reduce the stress for me, um, I cut the leaf off. Um, the plant actually um, still have thrips. Um, so once in a while I have to check all the leaf and I would use cotton pad and some hand sanitizers and just wipe them off. Um, and whenever I water this plant, I would bring it to the shower um, I would um, clean every single leaf with just dish soap and water and then I would spray them off and make sure they are clean. Um, I know that um, this plant didn't receive a lot of sunlight behind my prayer plant table. Um, it's only received light whenever I turn on the living room um, light. But I need to keep this separated from the rest of my plant collection. Um, for now. So um, until I get rid of it, um, it will stay here. Um, and I think it's going to be a long journey as well. So um, behind here are my two new additions to my plant collection. Um, I saw this in Ikea. Um, I know I have one already, but um, this one looks so beautiful and um, it doesn't have any fungal damage on the leaf, so I <laughs> I wanted a fresh start um, with jungle velvet, so I decided to buy one. Um, I actually didn't do anything um, this time. I didn't repot it. I didn't disturb the root. So hopefully, um, this will be a healthy one for me. Um, so this one right here is my um, monkey mask alocasia. Um, this is my second alocasia. So this is my golden pothos. I have this for a year now. So at the beginning, um, when I transferred the plant into this big pot, um, it wasn't even half full um, and I keep filling it up um, with my propagations and um, this is how the plant look like after a year. So this is my Christmas cactus. I have this for two and a half years now. I made this as big as it is now by propagating it. Um, it was the beginning of my plant journey and I just love propagating plants. I actually changed into um, soy propagation just because um, it's easy on me. Uh, I don't have to turn for them from water to soy. It's just extra work around here. So I hope you enjoy watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!